You know what? Sometimes the gospel lessons are a real challenge to a preacher. And today's parable is one such reading because the story as told contradicts the words that Jesus taught, contradicts the God that Jesus presented to us. Matthew, it's Matthew's gospel, so Matthew has Jesus telling a story and he says it's what God's kingdom is about. Everyone waiting for the bridegroom to appear. The wise bridesmaids are ready for him whenever he comes. The foolish bridesmaids are not. Then they are left completely out of God's kingdom by Jesus, the bridegroom, who shows up late and rejects those who aren't standing at the ready. Yeah, that's Mr. Knock and it shall be open to you, who doesn't let them in the door. So this isn't the God I worship. This isn't the Jesus I follow. So what can we think about all of this anyway? Well, the noted scholar, Amy Jill Levine, in her book, Short Stories by Jesus, talks about what the true role of parables is. She reminds us that parables exist on many levels. They don't exist in order to make us feel smug. Well, we have enough oil for our lamps. Or hopeless, we're staggering around in the dark and no one will help. If religion truly exists to comfort the afflicted and afflict the comfortable, then most parables are written to do both of those things. But if we insist on interpreting the story of the bridesmaids as Matthew presents it, it actually does neither one. It does not afflict the comfortable ones who have oil to spare. It does not comfort the afflicted ones who have used up everything that they have and are just running around trying to make it. So we have to ask, what might this parable teach us if we look at the characters in a different way than how Matthew presents them? So let's first con consider those foolish bridesmaids. What makes them foolish? Their fault wasn't that they fell asleep, because so did the wise bridesmaid. They counted on the bridegroom coming on time and didn't bring extra oil. The story tells us that's what made them foolish, but I disagree. I think what made them foolish is not that they ran out of oil. Their real mistake, I think, was to run around looking for more oil, trying to find a way to relight their lamps. What if they just waited there with the others? What if they had trusted that their presence meant more to the bridegroom than the state of their lamps? I wonder. And I gotta wonder about those other bridesmaids as well. What are we supposed to do with those supposed wise ones who couldn't spare an ounce of oil for their sisters? No, they say, we cannot share with you because we might not have enough for ourselves. So the wise break up the bridal party. They send the foolish away to bang on doors of friends and neighbors and shopkeepers to search for oil. And by the time those other bridesmaids get back, the party has started, the door is shut and they're left out in the cold, dark night. Do those supposed wise bridesmaids even think about them again? Do they even miss them? Or are they so happy to be one of the cool kids at the party, they pay no attention to the ones who are outcasts? So Matthew has Jesus saying that it's wise to hoard extra supplies rather than care for the real needs of others. I don't think that's right because Jesus did not spend his time on earth telling us to look out for number one, quite the opposite. The bridesmaids in the story, they are not living in God's kingdom. The bridesmaids in this story are living in the human kingdom, the kingdom of earth. Because we look at them, the bridesmaids, they don't even trust that the bridegroom loves them. And we know we are beloved. And speaking of that bridegroom, is it really supposed to be Jesus, the good shepherd who leaves 99 sheep to search for one that's lost? Jesus, who talks about a woman scouring the house for a lost coin, or a father welcoming his wayward son home? Really, this bridegroom is supposed to be Jesus? Nah, not at all. Because despite what Matthew would have us believe, this parable is about the life around him when he was writing, and it's a story about what continues to happen in our world up to today. Those who hoard more than they need, in this world, they're considered wise. Those who truly need more than they have 
are considered foolish. And the bridegroom has every right to slam the doors and make sure that only the cool people are at his party. It's often true that to understand the meaning of a story or a parable in scripture, we need to look at what just happened before the parable and then what happens afterwards. And this particular parable is told in the middle of a long string of parables. And Jesus tells us at the end of all those parables exactly what all the stories mean when he says, those who are truly wise are foolish in the eyes of the world. In the end, Jesus says, the wise in the kingdom of heaven are those who feed the poor. They welcome the stranger. They clothe the naked. They visit the ship the sick. They share what they have, even if what they have is so little that they may not have enough for themselves. They trust that if they really need something, someone else will share with them. The world considers the wise that have more than they need. That's not how it will be in the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven that we are supposed to be building right here and right now. I have to admit, I've probably been each one of the characters in this parable. Maybe many of you have too. I've been foolish and let my lamps run out and not trusted they could be lit again without my help. And I've been wise. I've been fearly, fearful of losing what I have holding tight rather than letting go. And I have been that groom, that groom refusing to let people inside the circle. See, I think that's what this parable does. Maybe that's what all Jesus' parables do. They allow us to find ourselves in the story, warts and all. They allow us to remember that each one of us bears the sin and the glory of being human. So, when you relate to those foolish bridesmaids, don't run around desperately looking for light. Wait in the dark. It's holy there and God will meet you. And when you relate to those wise bridesmaids, remember to share what you have, even if it scares you. Don't trade temporary comfort for lasting relationships. Take a risk. Giving to others is a holy place, and God will meet you there. And finally, when you begin to relate to the bridegroom, remember to open wide the door to the banquet feast, either real honest doors or more often, those closed doors that keep our icy hearts inside. God will meet us there and will sanctify those spaces. We do not know the day or the hour when Jesus will return, but here's what we do know. We know that until that day comes, we wait. We wait and we watch and we work. We do the work that we've been given to do. We support others along the way. And we trust that God is always, always with us, even when we feel unprepared or lost or unloved. And all of us, we, the wise and the foolish, the groom and the guests together with God, we can build a better world for everyone. We can. And let the people say, Amen. Amen.